straight into it. Um, does anyone have any questions about last week at all? About the kicking options? No? Perfect. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today is just work around um, roles versus positions. Um, what does that look like? Um, what do we mean by that? And et cetera. So just quickly, if we can just answer these questions, um, and we'll take five minutes doing this. What is a position? What is a functional role? And what types of roles are there? So feel free to answer them in any order or any, any way that you want. Position would be, um, example, fly half, center, wing, prop. Um, the roles, as far as I could see, like the uh, scrum half, fly half, generally um, their role is controlling the field, the attacking and the defensive positions. Um, the uh what else like the props and they uh providing support in the scrum okay that kind of stuff anybody else get any thoughts yeah <clears throat> and then you know 15s as far as 15s goes looking at even uh more narrowed down positions uh six versus a seven and the different kinds of responsibilities that those positions have on the field or loose head versus tight head prop. Um, I mean, some teams will even go down to the differences between the locks, which seems a bit over detailed, but um, yeah. And um, roles uh, in thinking about roles, like you're saying, nine and 10, kind of managing the game. Um, Tight head prop, kind of right, anchoring the the scrum, um, hooker, you know, throwing the line outs, um, wing scoring tries, right? So, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Interesting. So, um, when, when we have when we have the ball in hand, what options do we have? Run pass kick. Yep, run pass kick. <clears throat> so. All of a sudden, your functional role, if you have the ball in your hand, your functional role potentially could be a ball carrier, right? And if that's the case, then the person behind me, their role becomes what? Uh, so, yeah. Support player, right? So yeah. there's, there's, there's positions, and then there's the functional roles, and then there's, there's roles, right? And so what, what we're trying to get to is an understanding of just because you play in a position doesn't mean that you are pigeonholed into one functional role. So <laughs> you typically see, like, it amazes everybody when you see a prop kick, right? Oh, well, that's, well, that's not their job. That that's, Props shouldn't be doing that. Well, no, they're, they've got hold of the ball. They can run, they can kick, or they can carry, or they can pass, right? And so if we can create players that understand their role in the right moments, then we're going to produce a lot better players overall. So it's not necessarily as, oh, well, you're a hooker. Um, you're meant to throw in the line out and hook in the scrum and, you know, hit every other rook. That's not, that's not what a hooker's role is. That might be their position and their position description, but it's not what their role is. Does that make sense to, to us? Yeah. So uh, if, if we say that this is something which has always fascinated me is why do we have a hooker throw the ball into a line out? They're the one who's in the in-depths of the scrum. They hit every other rook like we just talked about. They're carrying the ball and then they have to throw the ball through an eye of a needle under pressure. Why isn't it the blind side winger or the winger on that side who can throw the ball because they haven't done anything all game? It's been done before. <laughs> it absolutely has, right? But it doesn't have to be the hooker. So Understanding the differences between positions and roles, I think is crucially important when we're trying to get the best out of a team and out of players. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna share with you some uh, kind of like my methodology around the roles and positions 
that I use specifically for sevens and they do get quite detailed. Um, but hopefully it's something that you maybe can take away and, and start to create on your own or use with your own teams. So again, this is sevens roles. And so, um, but they can be very relatable to 15s as well. So don't worry about that too much. Um, so what, what we have down the left-hand side is types of player. We have a distributor, a warrior, a finisher, and a specialist. And what we're looking at with these kind of things is a distributor is simply somebody who is, has a good skill set. They're able to catch and pass, and they're able to move the ball away from the contact area. A warrior is someone who's going to fight in the contact area more than anything, win the ball back, make tackles, do a lot of rooking. A finisher, somebody who's a little bit faster, maybe they've got a good step and they can finish tries. So if you think about it in like a three-part sequence, you need a warrior to win you the ball, a distributor to then get the ball and pass the ball to the finisher who's going to finish the try. Pretty simple. Uh, and then we have our specialists who are people who do individual specialist jobs. But then what I do is I, I kind of split these up into a little bit more fine functional roles. So the distributor is split up into a playmaker and a link, which, and they, they've all got their different, different definitions, which I'm not going to read through. You guys can read through them. Um, we have a scrapper, the bump, and the grafter. So the scrapper, for example, is the person who is always constantly on the floor winning turnover ball. The bump is somebody who's a bit more of a ball carrier. They can actually take the ball forward and take in two or three defenders. And the grafter is somebody who's just going to work and work and work and work. Gas player, um, pretty obvious. They're just really fast. So a Carl and Isles kind of player, just take the ball and go. A stepper who's got a bit more agility. And the specialist roles are the sweeper, the kicker, and the kickoff catcher. So as you can see from, the, um, from this kind of document here, They've got required skills and abilities, which is, again, really breaking it down. And it's only three for each. But what it does is it allows players to understand their role on the field so they don't have to try and do everything all the time. Um, and that, what that does is it allows players to play to their strengths. And if we can play to our strengths more than often, we'll be successful in what we're trying to do. So we don't necessarily want a warrior, for example, who they probably are very good winning the ball back and making tackles. And they're probably not that player who's got the ability to pass the ball 20 meters. So we don't want them to pass the ball 20 meters, not necessarily in competition. We can work with them to progress their skill sets in order to do that. But if we're going to get somebody who's going to pass the ball 20 meters, let's make it happen with a distributor. Does that make sense to everybody right now? Are we following what I'm trying to say here? Yes. Anybody, anybody got any thoughts on it to begin with? Anybody worked on this before? No. So when we look at the international stage, um, if you guys can just do me a, answer a quick question, name, name a player, and it can be sevens or fifteens, and name what type of player they would be and what their functional role would be. Um, I would look at like someone like a playmaker, like a Danny Cipriani. Yep. Okay, so what? Go on, an answer why? Oh, uh, as a playmaker in terms of how he organizes the defense, or organizes the attack, how he'll see things, uh, I'll watch him do the cross field kick, or the kick pass rather a few times uh some of his passes are very high risk very high reward out the back you know but he'll put people in the space and uh he also draws a fair bit of like attention to himself before making good passes yeah excellent example also, danny cipriani obviously a distributor a playmaker conducts the attack right moves moves people around moves the ball where he wants to put the ball and it, it's really really a strong threat and attack okay no, another player A Danny Barrett as a uh, warrior and maybe even more specifically as a bump. And why, why is that? 
Oh, because um, one, because he's always involved in breakdowns, but he's also a guy that they get the ball to um, as a runner to take in two tacklers um, and potentially uh, you know, just breaking the game line and getting offloads. Yeah, I love that example. I mean, he's a, a brilliant example of what a bump player looks like, right? It's very rare that you see him actually look for space, right? When he's got the ball in hand and he's got meters and yards in front of him, he will actually pinpoint and look at somebody and go, right, I'm going to run straight through you. And I'm going to create space and create overlaps for my teammates. And I'm going to run over you. And that's, that's what he's there for. And he clearly, clearly knows his role. So that's a really good example as well. Uh, what, what else do we have? Um, the only suggestion I could make there was uh, several Reese basically would be a finisher. He has the gas and he's a step out at the same time. Yeah, perfect, right? So, um, you know, I, I think the a really good example is just looking at the on the seventh circuit is um, Carl and Isles and uh, Perry Baker, right? Perry Baker clearly got some some gas, but he's also got a brilliant step in him. Right. And Colin Isles, very, very fast. He's got the gas. So it's it's very, it's very interesting to see that there. Um, and then where would um if I name a player, let's see where we'd put them. Where would somebody like um Madison Hughes fit into this? It's more of a specialist. Um he's a distributor, but um He's really out there because he's a really good kicker and he's a good sweeper as well. Absolutely. And it's not like we we put these players into the roles, right? So he can be a distributor and he can be a playmaker. He's probably looked more of a link player. So he links the the, um, the Warriors to the finishes a bit more versus playmaking. But there's no reason why you can't have a couple of players in a couple of roles. Right, and so I, I don't know if you, um, any of you guys watch the women's US team at all? Yeah. Um, where, where would someone like a Lev Kelter fit into this? Oh, I think she's a bump, like a warrior. <laughs> and she draws a lot of contact. <laughs> and, but she's also got a lot of gas, well, a fair bit of gas too, which is, so I guess it's not really a specific role, but she fills a couple different like positions. Yeah, so she can fit. She can fill in a few different roles, right? So she has got that bump ability. She has got that ability to finish, and she can also. She's got a good skill set. She can also move the ball really well. So she may get told if she's on the bench, for example, she she'll be brought in into a certain position, but to fulfill a certain role. Does that make sense to us in terms of what we're doing? So we make them on as a prop. Once you make them on as a prop and play in a different role. And so that's what we're going to look at uh, in our next one is um, what are our positional roles? So when we see, look at the, again, this is, this is just seven. So um, when we look at our props, what types of prop do we have? We have a handling prop, an edge play prop, a fast prop, right? All, all three different roles there. Um, hooker, we have a speed hooker and a fighting hooker. We have a link nine or a sniping nine. We have an attacking 10 or a transfer 10 a dynamic center, a playmaking center, or direct center, a, a bump wing, a stepping wing, or a speed wing, right? And so you may, for example, let's let's use Danny Barrett again. You may use Danny Barrett um, as a prop or a winger, right? There's no reason why we can't put Danny Barrett on the wing and say your role is just to bump because what he's going to do is going to take the ball on the edge and he's going to draw in two, three players, giving us the overlap on the other side. Anybody got any questions around these things? I know this is this is a lot of detail when we're actually looking at um, positions on the field, but I, I find this very useful when one a player comes to you and says, well, where, where do you see me? What do you, what strengths do you think I have? Where, where should I go? What should I be doing? Um, and a lot of the time players overthink their roles or their positions. And this allows you to focus those players into a bit more of a um, understanding of what's happening. And the next part about that is as well as selections. This makes selections a lot easier. 
Because if you can then uh, explain to players, well, if we go, for example, we've got these three types of players. We've got a distributor, a warrior, and a finisher. Are we? Do, can we pick a sevens team with seven distributors on the field? Mm. You could, but you could. probably wouldn't work. <laughs> right. You absolutely could. And you'd have a great time when you had the ball in hand, but as soon as you lose the ball, you're going to have a hard time trying to win the ball back. Right? Um, same with a warrior. If you have a bunch of warriors on the field, how fast is your team going to be? How much ball movement will there be? So what you can start to do is you can start to pick these players to balance out your selections. So you may think one day, okay, if I've got a sevens tournament, I know that the opposition that we're playing are quite big and slow. So we'll pick five finishes and we'll pick seven uh, and we'll split the seven players between warriors and distributors. So we can pick maybe three or four of each. Uh, and then we'll have more finishes than we will do anything else because we want to be able to run around the players, right? So we talked very early on in, in this um, in these sessions around how, how do we attack. Uh, if we want to attack going through players, we'll probably select a few more warriors because they're probably going to be bigger and a bit stronger in the contact area. And it's a really useful tool to be able to then explain this to players and say, well, look, we can't overload on distributors. And so what if we've got four distributors in a team, two of you have to be selected and two of you have to be not selected because we can't have too many of you on the field at one point. And it allows players to understand their roles and become better at their roles and their certain skill sets. So if we look at the right-hand side, if we're looking at the uh, the playmaker, for example, and they're not very good at creating or manipulating space, then that's some feedback that we can give them straight away. Right? There's, there's three things here that you need to do in order to get better at being a playmaker. Once you're able to do those things, then we can actually start to have conversations around selection. Any 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 thoughts on this? The whole maybe the whole thing, whether it's the positional roles or the um, the roles themselves. No, it makes sense. That's immediately. Again, it's nothing. It's nothing. Um, you know, rocket science. Again, we we've we've talked about um, throughout these thirteen weeks or fourteen weeks, whatever it's been. It's been. Very simple and quite. It's been very simple and basic in terms of what we're doing, but it's again, it's the simplicity of it allows you to really grow and expand how you're approaching a team or you're playing a team. And if you guys want, I'll, I'll be happy to send this document to you. Um, I'll put my email in the. Um, in the chat box and if you guys want it just shoot me an email and i'll send it over right. to you that's something that you, you guys want if it's useful that would be great yes okay, so that's my email it's in the chat box now so if you guys want it just shoot me an email and i'll send it over to you um, and then next week, uh, which, which is our last week, um, again, it's just the Q and A. So any questions about anything, whether it's coaching, playing the game itself, different techniques, skill sets, whatever it is, uh, please write them down and please let me know. And I'll do my best to answer as many questions as possible. So I, I, I guess, um, just if, if this is the last question or last couple of questions or whatever, um, when you're looking at uh, a newer player to the sport, right? Um, how do you decide? Uh, let's just look at it in terms of sevens. They they may be fast, and you think, okay, well, let me just put them out on the wing, right? Um, but if they can't tackle, you're kind of screwed, um, right? So, how do you decide? Okay, I've got this person who's really fast. Do I train them to, you know? play in the centers do i just put them out on the wing do i do i look at what i need as a coach and train them up for that or um just trying to think you know bringing in a new player how do you how do you make those decisions 
Yeah, I think that's I think that's a really good question because I think everyone goes through that. So I think one of the things that you can do is ask the player what they want first. So what what do they want to do? Yes, you might be fast, you might be big, you might be tall, but do you want to be someone who's stuck in the second row, right? And you can you can describe the positions to the players, and then you can also describe roles and say, well, which one do you think fits you best without knowing the game, right? So everyone would have everyone's got some sort of knowledge of space everyone's got some sort of knowledge of um some sort of sport uh, whether that's track whether that's um basketball whether that's watching it on tv never played it before like what what attracts them because whatever attracts them internally is what they're going to want to practice more of if they practice more of it they'll get better at it so if we have somebody you know like you say they're, they're really fast okay, great, you're really fast. What, does this position sound okay to you? Yeah, it sounds okay, uh, but you won't get the ball very often. Okay, well, I, I really want the ball because I think I've got a good, I'm able to move the ball really well or I see space very well. So you describe the roles to them, they may be able to be attracted to somewhere else. I think one of the, um, we talk rugby is all inclusive. Um, and then what we tend to do is pigeonhole people on their physical abilities so you may you may find someone who's you know a little bit bigger and we go right you're a prop but they could have the best decision making out of anybody else on the team and we put them into this prop position and then they're never able to use that ability to make decisions the way they could do and so i think describing the roles may then help the players decide where they want to fill into and over time, that may change. You know, you may see um, a few a few people as they get older, they they kind of get a little bit slower, so they move in the field, I guess. Um, but again, some people just love contact area, right? They love to fight people. They love to be on the floor wrestling with people and trying to steal the ball. You don't know until you ask them. I guess this would be my answer: is ask ask what they want and then provide them with what they need. Okay, that's great. Okay, so um, like I said, shoot me an email if you want that document, happy to share it. Uh, and then let's get some questions down for next week and then um, that'll be the end of it. It's been an emotional 13, 14 weeks. But it's been good, guys. I appreciate you jumping on again on a Monday evening. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for doing this for us. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks. No problem. Yeah. Cheers. Good night. Cheers. Good night.